everybody welcome back to the cabin this is the greenhouse garden as you can see I um, thought I'd give you a little bit of an update June 1st and this garden has been here well the clearing has been here since about this time last year we cleared this section of the forest which is right next to the cabin and adjacent to the south facing meadow there's meadow on the south side of this clearing uh, current clearing so put the garden in last year roughly planted just a few plants a few perennials put the greenhouse up put that shed up to accommodate solar panels future solar panels but really this year has been a transformation of this garden so i've been planting all kinds of perennials but also annuals but the biggest challenge with this garden is that it was forest and it was mostly just conifers so really sandy really acidic a very minuscule layer of topsoil on top maybe a centimeter or half an inch of soil and mostly like moss and and just acid loving dry loving plants and hardly any biological activity in the soil because of that sand basically no nutrients are held in the sand and no organisms are living in it because it's just so sterile so a big part of my challenge this year and a big uh, part of my time has been spent improving this soil as much as I can, bringing in some compost, taking compost, composted topsoil and leaves from other parts of the forest, and then bringing in these 40 bales of hay from my sister, organic hay or hay that's never been sprayed. Um, she's moving and had this extra hay still in the barn, so I was able to grab that and spread it out all over the place. So that's holding the moisture in, and it's also quickly decomposing, so it's starting to create some topsoil and organic activity already or microbial and fungal activity already so i'm happy to see that and then i spent the day or maybe what two days yeah two days with a wood chipper chipping all the branches from all the trees that i took down and uh, putting the poles aside to build the fence with but uh, all the branches and some of the twisted uh, logs and stuff i've been mulching and spreading that everywhere so now i've got a thick layer of organic material sitting on top of that sand and thin topsoil and then each time whenever i plant a perennial especially i'll dig a little hole fill that with some biochar that i've been making in the fire pit here uh, maybe some fish uh, remains any other organic material i can get and fill in that hole then planting the plant into that hole so what that does is immediately is it gets that gives that plant a good start um, the risk in the future is that it's got this pocket of nutrition of rich soil and then it's all kind of sterile going out around that so they tend not to want to put their roots out into that native soil because it's so poor but by increasing the top layer all that mulch layer um, as that breaks down it's seeping into the soil and it is creating a favorable um, environment for the roots of those plants so that's going to be a long process over five or ten years now the annuals same thing annual vegetables for the most part um, doing what I can I'll put maybe a shovel full or two shovel fulls of uh, compost or, or soil like a triple mix type soil um, down on the ground put that uh, potato in this case since a lot of these are potatoes put that down and then cover that in a thick layer of hay so in the case of potatoes all those potatoes are going to grow actually in the hay but the roots of the plant itself will be down in the soil uh, so speaking of potatoes I have about 300 plants planted now i started a number of those potatoes from seed which is the first time i've ever done that and i haven't seen many people actually do it um, i found one source of a seed called clancy a potato called clancy from a an ontario canada you know, supplier so not too far from me so i germinated those from seed planted them in the greenhouse and a couple places outside as well and they're doing really well so i'm excited to see how what the potatoes are like from that source um, so much cheaper of course two dollars and fifty cents or three dollars or something for a pack of like 250 seeds instead of buying like seed potatoes which is normally how you plant potatoes in uh, buying them like at a you know kilogram or two pounds at a time um, adds up in price now my other focus with potatoes this year is to grow a wide variety to see what performs the best here and then start focusing on those ones more um, so I've got I don't know 10 12 different varieties I'm looking forward to seeing how they perform.
rather than try to keep track of it once I have them out there, I'm going to tell you what I have here that I'm planting. This is all from one second last delivery. Well, it's the last delivery of plants. The next one I have to pick up. That's all the uh, hazelnuts and a few other things. So I have three hardy kiwis that are going to climb the fence. So I'm probably going to put the male in the middle back here and then uh, one of the females at that gate entrance going up to the cabin and another one to the right somewhere. So I'll put the male between the two females so that they get uh, good pollination. And then I have a, blend, a Ben Nevis black currant, red lake currant, another red lake currant, another black currant, another black currant. Um, smoky Saskatoon berry, which we call service berry here. Typically, I do at least. Now, what do I have there? A black velvet gooseberry. Another smoky Saskatoon. John's, Jan's prairie gooseberry. Thimbleberry. And then one, two, three, four, five grapes. And I've already planted uh, two sort of wine or eating grapes along the fence and that gate going out into the meadow and then two wild Oregon grapes I think native grapes over here along this fence line and I have two hardy pears that are good for this region or for this zone and that's it I think out of this order oh some lingonberries so basically like cranberries um, another couple of gooseberries that josta berry <clears throat> and some thimble berries so I think the gooseberries I'll put tight against the fence or even on the other side of the fence since if they're going to be pretty dense and thorny they'll act as a bit of a wildlife uh, deterrent on the outside of the fence. So you can have a, lo a lot of tasty stuff inside. I had a moose and it looks like a um, cow moose and a calf went right along right around the cabin this morning. Um, they didn't come into the garden, so they are discouraged by all the activity here and the uh, our scent and I don't know, just seeing all these structures and stuff. They're probably skirting the edge anyway, so I'm not sure if they tested the fence, but either way, I will get that fence up hopefully today, the rest of this fence, and then get some kind of temporary gates at least put in place so they don't uh, funnel in through the entrance of the gate and then panic once they get in here trying to find an exit. All this woody debris I'm keeping on the forest floor that's going to break down, add nutrients, add organic material to the soil and also help slow down evaporation. Holy mosquitoes. <laughs> 